One of our Rotarians is an artist, and he decided he wanted to empower the children through art. So the goal was that they would paint the mural in their dining room. And they, they selected their executive committee, they decided what would be on the mural, and then any kid that wanted was invited to come and paint the wall. These are my favorite photos. At the very bottom where you see the cat and the butterfly and the bird, those are done, I swear, by three and four year olds. But look closely. Remember these kids are in western Siberia, the end of the world, the back of the beyond. And I asked, what do you want to see on that wall? What did they say? Pokemon, Mickey Mouse, Bart Simpson, a palm tree. <laughs> It's interesting. So, so you know, the story at the beginning was sort of sad, and now I have you laughing, but some pragmatist in the room is thinking, well, that was sort of nice, but, I mean, really, what does it all mean? I mean, we spoiled, we've spoiled so far 300 kids, but think of all the kids in the world. I mean, isn't what we do as Rotarians merely trying to put a Band-Aid on a major hemorrhage? You may not know this, but in Russia, there are 29,000 children in Russia's institutions for the severe mentally retarded. And by age four, four-fifths of all kids in orphanages are diagnosed as mentally retarded. There are 130,000 homeless kids in Moscow alone. There are 17,000 victims every year of attack, and 2,000 commit suicide. What difference does it make? Well, one day two Rotarians were walking along a beach and the beach was littered with starfish. And you could see these starfish trying to breathe in our oxygen air, trying to survive. And as the two Rotarians walked and talked, every now and then one would reach down, pick up a starfish and throw it back into the ocean. Finally, the second Rotarian couldn't bear it any longer and said, what are you doing? You can't possibly throw them all back. There are hundreds, maybe thousands here. What difference does it make? And they walked a little further, and the first Rotarian picked up another starfish, and he threw it back, and he said it made a difference to that one. So, the children of Russia. Do you remember these children who witnessed their father murder their mother? That was then. This is now. They're all grown. They've all graduated from high school. The three boys all received a $300 stipend from the sponsoring Rotary Club, and they went to vocational school, and they've completed their studies. Together, they bought an apartment, they remodeled it, and they're living together. I call this the footprints in the snow. Remember the children whose mother left them alone for six, uh, three weeks? That was then. This is Masha now. When she first came to the orphanage, she had a speech impediment, and her speech was not very clear at all. And the doctor said, well, when it's time for the others to go to school, you should homeschool her. When she gets to be about eight or nine, we will break her jaw, and we will reset it, and then her speech will be fine. If you knew what I knew about the old medical equipment, the lack of anesthesia or painkillers or antibiotics. You wouldn't want anybody to mess with this beautiful child. So we gave a doctor $100, and I never saw it, but I heard it described, and it sounded like a brace for her jaw, to realign her jaw. And she wore it. She went to public school with her, her uh, colleagues, and she got all A's and B's her first year. Her little brother, Sasha, on your left, and the other little boy that day are doing something that they had never before done until that day. They are taking a walk holding the hand of a man. Well, um, I was back last year, and after 10 years of their living at the orphanage, their mother convinced the judicial system that she was a fit parent, and they've all been reunited with their mother. Of the first Head Start type program in 1999, there were seven kids who went off to public school and four of them got all A's and B's their first year. Zhenya was the smartest, the oldest. She came to the orphanage by train, so to speak. 
Her mother abandoned her on a train. She, she was the big sister to the other kids. She was always looking after them. She was always teaching them what she learned. She only had one selfish wish. She wanted her own family. In the summer of 2003, the phone rang in Anchorage, Alaska. I picked it up, and on the other end, speaking flawless English, was Jania. Her dream came true. She has a mother, father, and a brother, and she's living in the state of New York. And then there was baby Lena, the baby in the box. When I taught the um, first class, a Head Start type class, the, her caregiver said, don't waste any time on Lena, she's hopeless. She can't learn anything, we're gonna move her over to that other institution as soon as the, the paperwork is complete. Well, Lena didn't know that, and so when I would give instructions to the other children, Lena would do them also. And Lena invariably got, them cor got the task correct and often finished first. The director came and observed one day and said, I've seen it with my own eyes, Lena is not hopeless. Um, we switched her to another apartment with a different caregiver who had a different opinion. She started public school in Tomsk with her classmates, but um, you won't find her if you go looking for her in Tomsk. Try Texas. She I was adopted by a family in Texas. And her big sister, Tanya, in the brown uh, blouse, was one of the first students to get the stipend from the uh, sponsoring Rotary Club. She enrolled in Teachers College. She got married, she had a baby, and she got her degree. Then um, there are those girls that I said, um, the nights are a horror. And maybe not only the nights, but that was then, and this is now. Both um, Lena and Tanya have graduated from high school. They received a $300 stipend. They went on to Teachers College. Tanya, in the white blouse, graduated with and is a PE teacher. Lena um, graduated from Teachers College in the Department of Foreign Languages. She tries to write me uh, letters and uh, was very happy to inform me that um, she's married, she has a son, and she's teaching in a rural village in Russia. But unfortunately, some of these stories are like Humpty Dumpty, and you remember that all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And unfortunately, that's true of this big sister here. Um, the abuse that she endured at the hands of her stepfather was repeated, and she never got any kind of care or counseling for it, and frankly, I don't know if you can fix some people, but as an adult, she has made a lot of um, very bad decisions, but a lot of psychologists will tell you it's not unusual that she's made the decisions that she has made. However, as for the three younger kids, they all got uh, adopted as a threesome by a family in the state of Washington. For the last um, 11 years, the sponsoring club has been giving kids who graduated from the orphanage and from school a $300 stipend if they wanted to go to vocational school or teacher's college, or in one case, we even got one admitted to a university. $300, I don't know what $300 means in Idaho. I know what it means in New York, Washington DC, San Francisco, and even Anchorage, Alaska. With $300, you can go out, have a great meal, have a great wine, um, maybe pay an ex exorbitant amount to park your car, pay for a babysitter, and leave a, a friendly tip, and you've done it. This $300 meant the difference between getting haircuts, bus passes, um, having meat in their meals during the week and giving them the encouragement of knowing that somebody on the other side of the world cared enough about them. So, what difference does it make? Next time you ask yourself that question, please remember that it made a difference to Sasha in Blagoveshenks, where we sent diagnostic medical equipment. And it made a difference to Andre in Magadan, where Rotary sent this van with a lift for wheelchair kids. And it made a difference into Barnaul, where Rotarians and the Rotary Foundation matching grants sent 
two incubators. And it made a difference to these kids in Tomes who invited me back to see them in 2006 because they wanted to tell me something. Carolyn, we don't have cancer anymore. One day, you have to make the same decision uh, when you see those starfish lying on the beach. And will you just keep walking because you can't possibly throw them all back? Or will you throw them back one at a time? I know it's a rhetorical question because you're sitting here and I already know your answer. For the last 13 years, I've written this story and I get the glory. But you know what? It wouldn't have been possible without you because you're the people who year after year, faithfully and without question, when asked, you give money to the Rotary Foundation so that we can plant trees in Mongolia and you won't sit under their shade. And some of the money that you've given to the foundation is used to buy food for starving kids in Africa. You don't get invited to dinner. And there's that money that purchases books that we send to India for kids to study. You won't be going to their graduation. And even some of your money is used to finance microcredit banks so that men and women in developing countries can have a tiny loan, start their own business, and take those first steps towards independence. And you won't be there. When I look at you, I see the face of Rotary, humanity in motion. None of this would be possible without you, and I thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, for reminding us of the difference we make. As you were talking, I was thinking, do we only respond to the trumpet summoning us to war? Or do we respond to another trumpet, the Rotary International trumpet, calling us to service above self, peace, goodwill, and understanding? I would like to think that's the trumpet to which we respond. I was also thinking, Carolyn, uh, about Russia as we knew it, those of us who grew up in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and how fearful they were. They were not humans. They were a civilization to be destroyed. And one thing Rotary does is to humanize former enemies. Thank you for your work. We appreciate you. And in honor of your visit here to Idaho, and we hope you return, we have a, a gift for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.